I've got an hour, hour and a half before I have to go to my last day at work. Well, my last uh, scheduled day. From now on, I'm gonna be appointment only at the tattoo shop. That way I can spend more time with you guys, be out on the water more, and upload a little more frequently. I wanted to go over what I'm about to throw real quick. When I'm going out on just quick little jaunts like this, like little hour long sessions, or you know, maybe a lunch break session or something like that, you know, I'm sure that uh, most of you guys have like a day box or a backpack that you carry with you. And I've got the same. And as we move into fall here, well, Vegas, it's still pretty warm, but most of you guys in the country are starting to move into that fall pattern. Some places are in full swing, so my options are going to start to change a little bit, or what I'm going to throw at least is going to start to change a little bit as those fish start moving into the backs of creeks and chasing shad and, you know, chasing bait fish for those West Coast guys and people that get trout plants in, in uh, you know, throughout the country. If you get trout planted into your lake, you're going to start focusing a little bit more on those bigger soft baits like Huddleston's or, you know, a lot more trout pattern stuff or shad pattern stuff. So I'll show you guys my day box real quick and, or my hour and a half quick go out on the lake box. So it is super organized. This is kind of how I do it. Uh, if I'm going out real quick, I just throw stuff in a box. I guess we should start with the biggest first. I have got a extra slow sink. Uh, Hinkle Shad in Golden Shiner. Uh, this thing on Fluoro, it will like extra, extra slow sink and just basically run subsurfaced. Uh, I heard that's something about this run of Golden Shiners that don't sink as fast as say the, uh, the regular Shad painted ones. So I'll run this subsurface and kind of shallow in coves, stuff like that. Kind of wake it if there's a little bit of chop on the water. The Hinkle Shad. Always a good one in your lineup. As the water gets cooler, we are gonna start moving into soft baits a lot more. Can't go wrong with a good old Huddleston. This one I think is, I think the color Shasta? I'm not positive. My water here is really clear, so I try to go with, you know, the natural, as natural colors as I can get. Or this one is kind of translucent on there. So I've got this one, Butch Brown rig. The hook's not in right now, but this is a rate of fall five, and that's pretty much all I throw because I fish my little home lake here is pretty shallow, and if I'm out on Lake Mead, which is really deep, I may throw, uh, you know, a rate of fall 12, but that's really far and few between. Rate of fall fives tend to come up and over cover a little bit easier. They don't get hung up as much. Next is going to be the good old Rago Weedless. I love these things. I love weedless presentations. You guys have seen videos on them. Early fall, I'm not throwing as big a bait, say, maybe as I would in like late fall and winter. Because a lot of times, a lot of lakes, they're keyed in on that smaller size bait fish. So going a little bit smaller in this early fall bite, not really that bad of an idea sometimes. And that leads me to Huddleston 68s. These little guys are awesome. They've got the eight inch tail on there with the six inch body. Um, they put off a lot of vibration, so they're good for stained water when you want that vibration in the water. And they're just all around, they're all around great baits. When you're throwing this, or even when you're throwing a Huddleston, the eight inch, think of it like a, you know, think of it like a search bait. Um, if you, you know, if you don't want to sit there and count it down over points and stuff like that. Same spots you would throw a spinner bait or, you know, maybe a rattle trap or a square bill or something like that, so. You can cover a lot of water with these little guys and these things get crushed. For you guys that throw traditional stuff, you know in the fall that a, a jerk bait bite is great. Two baits that I like to use that kind of kind of act the same as a jerk bait in the swim bait category is one, the DRT Tiny Clash. You guys have seen this. I will change out the hooks for bigger ones and that what it will do, I'll run it bill out, no bill in it, and that will cause a extra slow sink almost suspending depending on the water temperature action and you can fish this thing almost exactly like a jerk jerk bait you can slow reel it and it'll move along or you can you can reel it pause and then jerk jerk pause jerk jerk pause and this thing absolutely gets crushed awesome awesome bait for that and then on the last video you guys saw me catch it on saw me catch those fish on the Roman made negotiator. Also, another great 
I tend to treat it kind of like a jerk bait style glide bait. You can slow retrieve it and just has a really slow, graceful, meandering glide. Or this thing is a slow sink also, but it sinks really slow. So I think it sinks about a foot every two or two and a half seconds. And you can even lighten up the hooks a little bit and that'll make it almost a suspender. So they've got so much detail into how they're made and weighted. You don't want to screw with them too much because you will definitely adversely affect the swim. So I've just got stock hooks on there. It gets hit by big fish, it gets hit by small fish. So one last thing I like to throw in the fall if the bite is really tough and I just can't get on anything and I, you know, I want to get a bite is uh, a swim jig setup. And you guys have probably heard, if you follow Tactical Bass, and you guys have heard Matt Allen talk about them a ton. I just pick up these little three-quarter swinging head. They're like a swim jig, but they've got a, a free swinging hook on them. And I will throw these little BPS tournament speed shads on there. Because they're like four bucks or five bucks, and they are six inch. So that's a pretty good presentation. Three-quarter or an ounce jig. Matt on Tactical always talks about that being a really effective technique because not only do you have the paddle tail or here, you've got that paddle tail going, you know what I mean? But you've got the secondary action of the skirt on the jig fluctuating back and forth, you know? So it really gives some cool action in the water. And a lot of times in early fall, these fish are kind of key, like I said earlier, the fish are keyed in on a smaller bite. so. They're chasing some of these, you know, smaller shads and bait balls around the lake and into backs of coves and creeks and stuff like that. So that's not to say that they're not going to hit gl big glides. They definitely do. But on my little home lake during this time, the next month or two, I kind of tend to, I don't know, keep my stuff usually around eight inch, eight inches or under is kind of what I'll throw. But I still throw the depths if I'm out on the river or the lake for sure. Uh, but on my home lake, the fish, the class of fish is smaller. So Let's get out on the water. I got like an hour and then I got to go to my last day at work. So here we go. We're running right down the middle of some rock piles or some rip wrappers. Some little boulders or something. I can feel them. I can feel it popping up and over it. Right in between two points. Pretty much dead center in the lake. There should be a fish there, by all accounts. There we go. No, no, no. Did I get a fish? What did I get? Nope. No. Oh, I did get hit. Look at that. I knew there was a fish there. Now, I just got to connect with him. Man, he tapped. He hit, he hit it once and then pop, pop. I swung on him and no one was home. Have, uh, if you guys haven't seen, I got the shirts for sale. Um, the SBC store or no, SBC store forward slash bigcartel.com. Uh, you guys can go on my Instagram and see the shirts that are for sale right now. They are for pre-order. The orders that have been placed already are getting put into my printer today or tomorrow. And then they should be printed in the next couple, hopefully in the next couple days. But I was hoping that money would help out with the trip to Florida, but doesn't look like that many people ordered them so we'd have to figure something else out pretty tapped on cash right now and uh kind of did the math and it's going to be like 800 bucks in gas there and back i don't know what i'm going to do i'm going to try to maybe i don't know i thought about setting up a gofundme but i'm not huge on crowdfunding i mean i don't know it just feels awkward setting up a gofundme how do you guys feel about a gofundme i think it's tacky is it like, like, I mean, I don't know. I know a lot of people set them up for stupid reasons, but I guess it would be for you guys to bring content for you, you know? 
I'm back at my house. I am so late for work. I gotta hustle up and get ready for work. Uh, today wasn't a crazy video. Um, give some of those baits a try if you've got them in this early, early fall for the West Coast guys. The mornings are cold, the nights are cold, colder than we're used to, but then the days heat up pretty good. So as fall progresses, start moving into those big soft baits, big trout patterns, stuff like that. So thank you guys for watching. I always appreciate it. If you guys haven't subscribed, go ahead and mash that subscribe button down below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. You guys might be seeing more videos like this. Uh, my upload schedule is definitely gonna get, definitely gonna increase. And some videos might be totally off the wall, crazy edits. And then some videos might just be like this, man. Just might, I might just show you what it is day in and day out for me, how I go about things. So today I had like an hour and I was out there for an hour and a half. Uh, let me know what you guys would think too about some type of crowdfunding, like a GoFundMe. Do you guys think it's tacky? Is it, I don't know. I've never done anything like that. I've always been really, I've always shied away from any type of donation thing, but I've got to figure out how to get some serious cash together to get across country here in like three and a half, four weeks. And I'm, I don't have the money right now. So the shirts didn't really fly off the shelves like they would expect them to. That's life. That's business. So anyways, I got to get to work. Thank you guys for watching. Like always, stay safe out there. Tight lines. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Again.